Hi Earl Stories fans, this story we are about to listen to is emailed to me at earlstories the number zero at gmail.com. If you have a story, you think fans would enjoy email me and I will post it. A dentist discovers his wife is cheating on him when she starts to act nervous when op purchases internal cameras from a Cyber Monday sale. Let's listen to the details. Found out my cheating wife was having SX with a former student, and she even helped him get a job. I just want to inflict pain at this point. I want to hurt her emotionally. It takes ages to build trust and a few seconds to break it. The feeling of betrayal is painful. It will take time to overcome the painful emotion, and it often leaves scars. I accidentally found out my wife had been cheating on me for years and developed a revenge plan. After I recover from the betrayal, the next step is to seek revenge. The idea is to inflict the same pain I felt on the person who caused it. I, 53 male, married a 59-year-old woman 17 years ago, we've been together close to 30 years. The woman was divorced and already had two daughters, whom I happily accepted and helped raise. Both daughters are grown, living on their own, and have families. I thought we had a strong marriage and excellent communication as we were open about our feelings. Our open communication prevented unnecessary misunderstandings, but we recently started spending less time together due to work commitments. I worked as a dentist and often came home late, while my wife worked from home for an online college as a computer science professor and spent the entire day in the house. Our only interaction was on weekends, and we stayed close during this time. One fine day, I decided to update our home security system, Amazon was having their Cyber Monday sale, and the Arlo home security systems were on sale, 50% off. I purchased three interior cameras, we had a camera that faced the front street and the backyard, I thought if those cameras missed an intruder, I could catch them in the house with the interior cameras. We live in a good neighborhood. I did not have a good reason for the camera purchase, but when I looked at the Amazon app, something kept telling me to purchase those cameras. The price was outstanding, and I could afford it, so I did, coupled with those reasons, I am also an impulse buyer who figures things out later without a solid plan or a valid reason. I did not tell my wife because she always complains about me buying things we do not need, although I make six figures and my wife makes high five figures. After 17 years of marriage, we learned to put up with each other's shortcomings. The Amazon package arrived about two days after I ordered the home security camera and a few other items. Since she is always at home, my wife receives and opens the packages. It is not out of the norm for my wife to open a package addressed to me because I often buy items for her as a gift. We do not give gifts for special occasions like birthdays and Christmas, if we want to purchase each other a present, we purchase the present. My wife and I share our Amazon account. My wife saw the interior cameras I purchased and called me right away. This was red flag number one, my wife typically waits to talk to me at home if she has a non-emergency issue. I could not answer my wife's call because I had a patient in the chair. I told the office manager I would call her back in 15 minutes. When I called my wife back, she seemed to be on edge, she asked why did you purchase interior cameras, I said we needed them for home security if the two exterior cameras do not catch somebody if they break into the house. My wife said we have lived here for over 15 years and never had a break in, I do not think we need to set up interior cameras. I said okay, mainly because I needed to get off the phone and get ready for my next patient, and my wife said I would box the cameras up and return them on my next break, I said okay. I have about a 30-minute commute from work to home in the morning and about a 50-minute commute from work to home in the afternoons. In the afternoons, traffic is heavier than in the morning because I leave home early to get to work. I am more of a morning person than a night person, basically up early and sleeping early. The drive home was your usually bumper-to-bumper slow-moving affair, I was changing the radio station looking for good tunes when I came across a talk show. The talk show was centered on how I did not recognize the changes in my spouse, I am not sure if it was a local talk show or a national one, but this talk show made me think about my wife's quick call and her insistence of taking the cameras back today, what was the hurry? I decided I needed to observe my wife closely, I felt she was hiding something. Now an affair was the last thing on my mind, I thought maybe she was drinking heavily or smoking some weed. My wife was a weed smoker in college and she quit when she had her first daughter. 
I would have been cool with the drinking or the weed smoking because she was a great wife and a perfect mother, plus, I think smoking weed is no different from drinking a bottle of wine. I am one of those guys who think weed should be legal, even though I have never smoked any. When I got home, I greeted my wife and asked her how her day was, she said her day was good, and then she started asking about the camera purchase and why we needed interior cameras. I said I thought additional security would be A+, and they were on sale, my wife said with an inquisitive look, are you checking up on me? I said no, I was looking at the Cyber Monday sales and saw the cameras were half off, and I thought additional security would not hurt, the cameras were cheap. My wife looked at me and smiled, and said, thanks for the thought. I'm here all day and can call the police if I needed help, I said okay and asked her if she returned the cameras, and my wife said yes. My wife returning an Amazon package on a Thursday was red flag number two, because of our busy schedules, we always returned an item on the weekend when we did our shopping and errands. All I could think about was the person on the talk show talking about how her husband suddenly changed his hairstyle and started wearing better work clothes. I knew something was off, but I did not know what it was, but I was determined to find out. My office manager has been with me for 10 years, and she is the best office manager a dentist can ask for. I did what I call a Captain Obvious move, the next day, I asked the office manager why would a person would not want you to set up cameras in your home, and the office manager said what I already knew, they do not want you to see what they are doing. We are not close enough for me to share my personal details with the office manager, she and her husband have been at my place for dinner a few times, which is the extent of our relationship. I do not want to be too close to a person I may have to fire if her work performance slips. I decided to call my sister and get her opinion, to determine if I was feeding too much into my wife out of the norm behavior. I had a 40 minute gap in my schedule, and I texted my sister and asked my sister to call me when she got an opportunity. She texted me about 10 minutes later and told me she was free. My sister works at a Toyota dealership in the service department, about an hour away from where I live. I told my sister the story about Cyber Monday and my wife's reaction to purchasing interior security cameras, and my sister mirrored the office manager's response. I was worried, my mind raced back to the talk show, the lady's husband was cheating on her, and I feared the same. This was the first time I thought my wife was cheating on me, but why, how, and with whom she is always at home? Before COVID hit, my wife used to travel once a year for in-person in-service, something she has not done in three years. When all of this happened, I was not a Redditor, I was unsure how I would catch her, my wife, who is tech savvy and good at cybersecurity expert, the interior cameras are a no-go because she knows about them. I would have to use an indirect approach to determine if my wife was cheating on me. My wife and I go out to dinner on Fridays and Saturdays. I decided to leave my phone at home and asked my wife to use her cell phone to gauge her reaction. While enjoying some appetizers, I asked my wife if she had seen my phone. I went through my pockets as if I had lost my phone and my wife said no. Then I said maybe I left it in the car. I forgot to tell the office manager I need her to open up early on Monday so we can prepare for a wisdom tooth extraction. I asked my wife to give me her phone, so I could call my phone when I got to the car, my wife said she would walk out with me and call my phone. This was red flag number three, my wife is too lazy to walk out to the car if she did not need to, and it was about 55 degrees outside and she would have to put on her coat and scarf. Wow, my wife did not want me to use her phone, this is the first time in our 17-year marriage that my wife did not hand me her phone, she walked out to the car with me and called my phone. I fumbled like I was looking for my phone under the seat of the car, and then I said maybe I left it at home. Can I use your phone to call the office manager? My wife, who had the office manager's number in her phone, called the office manager and delivered the message, she looked at me and asked when I wanted her to open the office. I told her that at 7.30, we usually open at 8 a.m. I think the office manager had a few questions, and my wife said he would call you tomorrow, we are at dinner now and hung up. At this point, I knew she was hiding something, and it was not drinking or weed, we went back inside and finished dinner. The entire time we were at dinner, my heart was hurting, the love of my life may be seeing someone else. I wanted to forget everything I thought because I loved our life, and I wanted to keep the girls in my life, I was not sure how the girls would react if we got a divorce, but I had to know the truth. 
I was unsure how to get to the truth, but I was determined to. My wife came from money, her dad was a doctor, and her mom was a high school teacher. My wife used to create apps for a local company before she elected to become a college professor, working from home made it easy for us to raise the two girls. We did not have to pay for daycare, and this allowed us to save money while I was building my dentist practice. I had to fight for everything I got, my dad was a landscaper, and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. We did not have a lot, I did day jobs, night jobs, work-study, applied for student loans, anything I could do to pay for college. I made it and was determined to keep what I worked hard to get, regardless of what I had to do. My wife and I met on a vacation in Vegas, I was there with a few of my college buddies, and my wife was there with a few of her friends. I first spotted her on the dance floor and gave her a wink, she smiled and blushed a little. After I finished the dance, the girl I was dancing with tried to follow me to my table, I told her I would catch up with her later, all while keeping an eye on my wife to see where she was sitting. I told my buddies this hot chick was looking at me and we should send her and her friends a round of drinks, one of my buddies said which one do you want? I like them all. I said the one in the black dress with the red hair, he said okay and walked over to my wife's table and told her I wanted her number. My buddy who did this is the cheap one of the bunch, he was not going to buy a girl a drink unless he knew he would get some, I'm glad he did. My wife wrote her number on a napkin, and my buddy gave the number to me and said I just saved you about $50 on drinks, you owe me $25, with a grin on his face. I called my wife the next day, and we met for breakfast and had a 4 hour conversation. She ditched her friends, and I ditched my friends the entire day. When they say you know who the one is, that is true. I knew my wife was the one. At the time, she lived in the Northeast, and I was living in Texas, doing my residency. I flew to the Northeast and met her parents, my wife had graduated college two years ago and had a small apartment. My wife worked for a small tech company that created apps for different businesses. I stayed in a hotel at my wife's request and later discovered she did not want me to meet her two little girls before getting to know me. I met her parents, and I do not know if they like me or like the fact that their daughter was dating a dentist, they were pleased to meet me. My wife's parents were friendly and treated me with respect. We did the long distance relationship until I got my dentist license and decided to move to the Northeast. We got a bigger apartment, and I popped the question a two years later, after we were married, I started my dental practice, and my wife built my website and created the business app. All had been good until I made the Amazon Cyber Monday interior camera purchase, then my world changed. I have a small group of friends I hang out with, I'm more of an introvert in the relationship, I met most of my friends through my wife's friends. One of them, I like, he is down to earth and a straight shooter, we go to the gym and work out together, and he is my doubles tennis partner. We routinely beat up on a few doctors to lower their superiority complex. When I got home from dinner, I texted my tennis buddy and asked if he wanted to play this weekend, and he said yes. I told my wife I was playing tennis Saturday, and she gave me a sad look and then quickly asked how long I would be gone. I said about two to three hours, and she said she would do some shopping and to take my time. This was red flag number four, my wife and I spend Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays together because we don't have time the rest of the week. About four years ago, my buddy asked me to play tennis on short notice, and I said yes, when I told my wife, she hit the roof and said the weekends are for family and I need to plan better. This time the disappointment looked fake, and she seemed to like that I would be gone for an extended period. I was unsure if this was my imagination or if I was seeing what I was seeing, my gut was telling me it was not my imagination. I met with my buddy, and we played a few games of tennis, I asked him if we could cut our games short so we could get a coffee. My buddy looked at me strangely because he knew I do not drink coffee, I'm a green tea type of guy, but he got the hint that I wanted to talk. I told my buddy everything and what I thought my wife was doing, my buddy said one red flag could be explained, but four required an investigation. I told my buddy I was unsure how I would find the truth, and he suggested I hire a private investigator, I said my and my wife's finances are tied together, if I spent money on a pie, my wife would know. My buddy said I know a guy that does favors for people, and people pay him money for the favors, he is not a licensed pie, but he may be able to find out what your wife is up to. 
I asked how much he cost, and my buddy said $25 an hour plus expenses, and he would pay for the guy, and I could pay him back later. I said done, and thank you. I thought this was a good plan because if I were wrong, my wife would never know I thought she was cheating on me. My tennis buddy called the guy he recommended, explained why we needed his services, and gave him my cell phone number, the guy called me the following day. We arranged to meet for lunch on Monday to discuss how we would proceed. I met the pie and told him what I wanted, which was to know if my wife was cheating on me, and he said he could follow my wife and report what she did, which would work. I asked my sister to call my wife and tell her she needed me next weekend to help her move some furniture, I told my sister to make it sound good, and she did. My sister told my wife to tell that white-collar brother of hers to get his gloves. I needed him to help me move some furniture around this weekend, and my wife relayed the message to me. My sister moved from Texas to the Northeast to be around me, we were close growing up. She never went to college and had no desire to go to college, she got a decent job at the Toyota dealership and has been doing well. My sister's personal life is a different story, she had a few loser boyfriends, and presently, she is single. I told my sister of my plan to watch my wife while I'm at her house, and she said the place is all mine, she has to work on the weekend. The week went well, my wife acted normal, and I departed for my sister's apartment on Friday after work. I told my wife I wanted to get an early start on moving furniture so that I would stay with my sister on Friday, she agreed and asked me what time I would be home on Sunday. I told my wife around 6 p.m., earlier in the week, that I would stay for a few days to visit with my sister. This was red flag number five. When I would see my sister, my wife would always eagerly come along. My sister and my wife were good friends, and my wife always enjoyed my sister's company. My wife and sister had a 10-year age gap that did not seem to matter, they had a lot in common. The pie was told I would be out of town on Friday and I would leave for my sister's house from work. The pie posted at my house at 6 a.m. and promised to give me updates if something happened. Well, it did not take too long, a young man who looked to be about 32 years old came to my house around noon on Friday, he walked close to the side of the house, something the pie told me and went into the front door. Later I discovered this is how I could not see the young guy on the front camera, my wife instructed him on how to enter and leave the house without being detected. My front door has a nook so the front camera is facing higher so it can catch a reasonable span of the front yard. The high angle created a blind spot if you walked closer to the side of the house. The pie said the guy stayed at my home for about an hour and a half, my wife typically takes her lunch break from 12.30 to 1.30. The guy departed at 1.30, and my wife remained in the house until 6.30 p.m. My wife called me at 6 p.m. and asked me how the drive to my sister's house was all calm and collected. It took everything I had not to give it to her then, I said the drive was okay and we were going to go out to get a bite to eat when my sister got home from work. My sister was already home. I knew if my wife knew my sister was home, she would want to speak with her. My wife asked me to have my sister give her a call after dinner, I said I would. As I spoke with my wife, my sister was right beside me, holding up both middle fingers. My sister and I ordered takeout and stayed at home because I was not in any mood to sit in a restaurant. My wife texted me and said she was about to grab a bite to eat, she met the same guy at an Italian restaurant. The pie followed her and sent me pictures of them holding hands and sitting in the restaurant. My wife was clever with her affair, she drove 45 minutes in the opposite direction from my sister's house to a restaurant in another city, with no hope of running into people we knew. She and her young lover had dinner and later returned to my house for you know what. My wife walked in the house first like normal, and the pie said the young man did the same entrance method he used earlier, walking close to the side of the house. The guy stayed at my home for about two hours, the pie captured pictures of the guy leaving, I texted the pie and asked him to record the guy's license plate number. Then I said screw it. I sent another text to the pie and told him to, follow the guy to his house and record his address. The pie did and forwarded me the information. I had all the information I needed, all I needed to do now was figure out how I would proceed with the divorce. My sister and I discussed my next course of action, my sister suggested we needed to get more evidence because the pie witnessed only a mild show of affection holding hands, we may need more for a judge. I agree, but I did not know how to collect more evidence because my wife would know if I set up cameras in the house. 
Later that night, around 9 p.m., my sister called my wife, she said she was on the way home from dinner, I'm sure she had her lover in the car and asked him to be quiet. They small talked for a few minutes, and then my sister said let me get off the phone so that you can have a safe non-distracted drive home, all while giving the vomit sign, then hung up. Friday night, at roughly 11 p.m., I texted the pie and told him he did not need to follow my wife Saturday and Sunday, I had the truth, and I told the pie I would call him Monday during lunch to discuss our next course of action. My sister and I hung out Saturday and Sunday, and then I departed to go home at about 5 p.m. Sunday. The drive home was slow, not only were my emotions drowning, but it was also raining on the way home. The rain streaked across the window, blurring my view, I felt the same way about life, I did not know what the future held, but I did know I wanted to get back at my wife, I didn't know how. When I arrived at my house, I took a minute to look at my accomplishment. I never cared about what I drive. Many professional people have to have a fancy car, to me, a car is just a mode of transportation, where I live, it had to be lovely. My wife and I purchased a $300,000 home 15 years ago that's worth more than 1.2 million. Over 3,500 square feet with a well manicured lawn, I was looking forward to the day when we became grandparents, there would be plenty of room for large family get-togethers. Being grandparents is a pipe dream now, my world has changed, when I returned home on Sunday, my wife greeted me like I'd been gone for a few months, with many hugs and kisses. I acted pleased to see her, and we went on with our Sunday. We would typically have closeness on Saturdays and Sundays, I did not initiate and wanted to see if my wife would, and she did not. Red flag number 6, this woman did not like going more than 7 days without closeness. My wife got her weekly fix and did not need me. I spoke to the pie on Monday during my lunch and told him I needed a way to get proof of a physical affair, and he suggested I place a recorder under my bed and under the living room couch. A voice activated recorder, VAR, would not show on the router, so my wife would have no way of knowing it was there, all I needed to do was purchase two and put them in place without my wife knowing. With only one day of surveillance, I was not sure if my wife was meeting the guy someplace else, if she was not, this might mean he was married. I'm a war buff. I love war movies, one thing I learned from war movies is to find out as much as you can about your enemy. I'm sure the guy knows all about me from my wife, but I did not know anything about him, this needed to change. I asked the pie to find out as much as he could about the guy sleeping with my wife, I think I want to make his life hell, also. My sister agreed to purchase the voice-activated recorders and meet me halfway to drop them off. She got them from Best Buy during her lunch on Monday, when I got off work, I met her. My sister asked me how I was doing, and I told her the truth. I was hurting, and she gave me a big hug and quoted something our mom used to say. There are things in life that we can control, but there will be things that are out of our control, we have to deal with both of them and be strong. I needed that. I thanked my sister and drove home with renewed vigor. When I got home, my wife asked me why it took me so long to get home, meeting my sister added an hour to my work day. I told my wife that my last patient was a little more complicated than anticipated. We had dinner, and I asked my wife how her weekend was, and she said it was uneventful, I had dinner with, my wife named one of her friends, which now I know who knows about her affair. We talked about my sister, and my wife said I have to get up there to see her, I asked my wife why haven't you seen her in a while, and she said she had been busy with work. I've made a decision not to initiate closeness with my wife, and if she does, I'm not going to go through with it. After my wife was asleep, I got up and read the instructions on operating the voice-activated recorder and placed one under the living room couch and under our bed. I went to work the next day with a heavy heart, my staff could tell I was not myself. The office manager and my dental assistant asked me was everything alright you seem distracted. I told them, I had a few things on my mind, but I was doing great, this seemed to ease their minds, but I'm sure they were going to keep a close eye on me so, I had to do a better job of acting. If my staff could read my mood, so could my wife. My game plan was to check the bar on Friday before me, and my wife goes out to dinner, I would deliberately leave my cell phone in the house to give me a reason to go in alone and take out the micro SSD card. I purchase additional SSD cards, 
so I could replace the one in each far and listen to the recording on my way to work on Monday, and during my lunch break. My wife and I spend the weekend together I nor she attempted closeness, which was fine with me. The more this goes on, the more I'm starting to dislike my wife, my mindset now is there is no coming back from this. During all this time when I'm spending the weekend with my wife the pie was following my wife's AP. I received a text from the pie on Sunday, he said he was able to collect information on my wife's AP. I texted the pie and told him I would meet with him on Monday during lunch, the pie confirmed the appointment. Monday, I departed home as usual, I almost gave my mood away by not giving my wife our traditional goodbye kiss. About five minutes after I left home, my wife called me and asked is everything all right, I said yes, as gleeful as I could, and she said you did not kiss me goodbye. I said I was running late. I scheduled an early appointment, my wife said okay in a bit of a disappointed tone, all the time, I was thinking I hope she was not on to me, I needed to collect more evidence. In my state, you have to show physical contact to prove infidelity, my wife's profession makes it hard to get physical contact on camera without interior cameras. The only type of physical contact I have is holding hands, and I'm not sure if that will count as infidelity in court. After speaking with my wife, I started listening to the micro SSD card, I was able to hear a conversation between my wife and her AP. The conversation went a bit like this, I could hear the doorbell ring, I elected not to get the full home security cameras with audio, only two security cameras that pick up video and not audio. My wife and I purchased this house about 15 years ago and never upgraded our security system, we both never put any thought into upgrading our security system because we lived in an excellent neighborhood. If I knew I would be dealing with a cheating wife, I would have gotten a better security system. My wife and her AP had small talk, it sounded like when he walked in, he said hi and kissed my wife, my wife asked him if he wanted anything to drink and her AP said yes, some water. Then I heard the two of them eating, my wayward wife fixed this asshole lunch, then the following sounds I heard was see you on Thursday, and my wife's AP said yes, if I need to cancel, I will call you on Teams, my wife said okay. I listened a little longer, and the AP returned to my house on Thursday, and they had lunch again. I pop in the micro SSD from the bedroom and I can clearly hear my wife and her AP having closeness. My wife sounded like she was 18 again, loud mooning, instructing her AP to go harder, and I heard her have a big O. I had to pull over, and I almost lost my cookies, the more I listened, the more I wanted to smash something, I knew I could not go to work in this state. I called my office manager and asked her to cancel my appointment for today because I was sick, I also asked them not to contact my wife or check on me later because I may have the CV-19 bug. The office manager said oh no I'm sorry to hear that and said she would cancel my appointments, I told her to go ahead and cancel all appointments for Tuesday and try to reschedule all appointments for Saturday of the following week, my office manager said, she would. I decided I had to check into a hotel to process what would be the end of my marriage. It was 8.30 a.m. I could not check into a hotel until 3 p.m., I quickly realized this was a bad ideal, I just need a place to relax and listen to the remainder of the SSD card, I decided to go to the local park. I text the pie and told him to meet me at the park vice my office and I received a text about 10 minutes later saying he would. I went to Starbucks and got a green tea put on my headphones and started listening to the remainder of the SSD card. The rest of the SSD card was closeness and small talk. The small talk consisted of how is work, what's going on, and how is a particular name. Now, I remember that name from when my wife worked at the app building company before she elected to become a college professor. Putting two and two together, this guy is working at the same job my wife used to work at. The big question is did they work together, or did she meet him there when she went back to visit a few friends? One of the things college professors have to do is keep up with industry standards, and my wife would periodically go to her former job and see how they are doing business. I think this guy is too young to have worked with my wife either she met him at her former job during a visit, or she met him somewhere else. I met the pie, and he told me he followed my wife's AP to his house, he told me where he lives, about 20 minutes from our house in an apartment complex. The pie said my wife's AP has a wife and a little girl about 2 or 3 years old. Then the boom dropped, the guy works at the job my wife used to work at, my wife quit her job to work from home as a college professor to be there for our two daughters. 
The plan worked out well for raising our kids, we did take a significant pay cut, but it was worth it, our girls are outstanding young ladies. After speaking with the Pi, I concluded we would never get physical contact the way we are going, the only thing I think I can get that will work in court is a confession. It's now time to meet AP's wife and let her know what's going on, I asked the Pi to get as much information about the AP's wife as possible. The next day I decided to go back to work, I had an epiphany, why should I feel the way I feel, I did not do anything wrong, and I was acting like a lovesick kid, and I had to deal with my reality. When I walked into work on Tuesday, my office manager asked why I was there. I said I went to the doctor yesterday, and I was negative for CV-19. I have a sinus infection, and I asked the office manager to call the patients she cancelled and ask as many as possible to come in. I saw about a quarter of my scheduled patients and took the rest of the day off to go to the movies. I had not gone to the movies since the girls were 16, when the girls turned 16, I was no longer the main guy in their lives. They got boyfriends and pretty much started doing what all teenagers do, their own thing. It was great to relax, get some popcorn and watch a movie, but then it dawned on me, I was already acting like a single man. When I went home hoping that no one from the office called my wife, to my surprise, she was not home, and I did not care. Usually when my wife is not home, I would call her and ask her where she is, but I didn't. When my wife returned, she had take out and said she had a hectic day she did not have time to cook. It was Tuesday, AP day, according to the Pi, and the micro SSD disc. Tuesdays and Thursdays, the weekend if I'm out of town, oh yay and the Friday I went to visit my sister, I guess me being out of town was too good to pass up. We sat and ate in silence, no matter how hard I tried, my mood was not the same, and my wife was so into her work or her AP she did not notice I had changed. I guess I could not blame her, I did not see she was having an affair, if it were not for the reaction I got from my wife when I purchased the interior cameras, I would have never known she was having an affair. How easily can people get into a routine and miss all the red flags all over the place? We retired for the night, my wife said good night and rolled over on her side away from me, laying there, I thought about how long has it been since we had closeness, and it was close to two months. I was partly at fault, I kept taking on new patients trying to increase my practice's annual income, and sacrificing part of my relationship with my wife. And then I thought I did not cheat on her, I was working hard for our future. One of the things my wife and I wanted to do later in life was to travel, my wife was putting most of her salary into her 403k account, and we were using the practice money to pay our bills. Well, that worked out well for my wife, now that we will be going our separate ways, I realize I had to protect my future. I turned and looked at her and spoke in a low voice, I'm going to come out on top. The following day, I went to work and changed the practice bank account during lunch. I got a new account and did not put my wife's name on the account. My wife's name was on the previous account, so I left $100 in the account to avoid getting a notice. The bank sent a withdrawal notice, but it went to the business email account to which I had changed the password. I did not worry about my wife noticing the withdrawal email, she never checked the business account emails. Here is how I wanted things to work out, I'll keep my practice, my wife will keep her 403k, and I will pay my wife 35% of the house value due to infidelity, this was my goal. I met with the pie three days later, and he said AP's wife did not appear to work, she was home and went to a few locations the past few days, like the grocery store in the mall. I asked the pie again how we would get physical contact, and the pie said it would be impossible without interior cameras. I told the pie my wife knows the items on the router, and I'm sure she will be on high alert after I order the internal cameras. Then the pie said it would be impossible unless they had closeness in the parking lot. I thanked him and told him I thought we are finished, I told him I would pay him in a few days. Now with my wife off the practice account, I could spend money unnoticed, I asked the pie to send me a bill to my practice, and I will pay him, the pie thanked me for letting him work for me and said he was sorry I had to go through what I was going through. Before we departed, I asked him if he would be available to testify in court if needed, and he said yes. The pie is not licensed, he is just a guy who does favors for a person, and in return, that person gives him money, if I needed him in court, he would be my friend that did me a favor. We did not have a signed contract, and I intended to pay him in cash. 
The next thing I had to do was decide how I would confront my wife and how I would get the financial parts that I wanted. I enjoy all sports, but I love playing tennis, one of the guys that I play against that is way better than me would always tell me I beat you all the time because you are always on defense, to beat a good tennis player, you have to at some point go on offense. I think this is what I need to do in this situation, go on offense. Taking time off is hard because I have a solo dentist practice, when I take time off, I have to plan in advance and block off my calendar. Well, I have to do what I must, I blocked off two weeks, three weeks from now. I told my office staff we would complete a few of our continuing education units and hold different training, I also told the office manager I would be out one of the two weeks. I called my sister and told her I needed her to take a day off if she could, and she said she would. I would have to keep up my appearance for the next three weeks, which was easy to do because my wife was fully checked out and into the affair fog. Life went on the same for the next three weeks, I was putting the final touches on how I was going to confront my wife and how I was going to break the news to our daughters that my wife and I were getting a divorce. My oldest daughter is level-headed and will understand my youngest daughter is emotional and will take this hard. I'm sure she will try to keep us together, and I think it's best to tell my daughters after I confront my cheating wife, and have worked out the divorce settlement. I know the guy's name from the VAR and from the pie running his license plate, I plan to get his wife on my side by showing her the affair evidence. I called my sister and told my sister my plan, I am going to use my sister to present the proof to my wife's AP's wife, and a few minutes later, I will walk in and speak with AP's wife. I thought it would be better to use my sister so AP's wife would not be intimidated by a male stranger walking up to her. The next part of the plan is to confront my wife and the AP. I will try to convince the AP's wife to tell the AP she has to go out of town. I will tell my wife I have to fly to Texas because one of my relatives is sick, I will have my wife drop me off at the airport and I will walk in and about 15 minutes later, I will have my sister pick me up. My wife and her AP went to dinner the Saturday I visited my sister. I'm hoping they do the same, and the AP's wife and I will join them at dinner 20 minutes later, just in time to enjoy a few appetizers. I may sound strong, but my heart is hurting. I have been with this lady for almost three decades, and now it's all about to end. I refuse to live life worried about when the next time this lady will cheat on me, I have been faithful throughout our entire marriage. I'm hurting so bad now that I don't know what to do, I navigate from anger to sorrow, I loved our life and thought we were happy. Reconciliation will not happen, I'm not built that way. If someone did me wrong in the past, you have shown me who you are, and I'm cutting you out of my life. It will be hard to cut my ex out of my life due to having two daughters, my daughters are not biologically mine but mine in every sense. My wife and I had so many student loans to pay we elected not to increase the size of our family, something I was willing to do because she was the love of my life. Even after her betrayal, I would not change a thing because I loved those two girls from day one. They are the apple of my eye, and I cherish every day we had together. I worry about how they will feel about me. I hope their love for me will not change, but I will cross that bridge when I get to it. The first week of my two weeks off, I asked my sister to drive to my city, we parked outside of AP's apartment and waited for him to go to work. AP departed for work at about 8 a.m., his commute was about 10 minutes, I was wondering if it was a coincidence he lived so close to us or if it was a well-thought-out plan. About 20 minutes after AP departed for work, my sister went up to AP's apartment and knocked on the door, a good-looking lady about 25 years old answered the door. I saw her and my sister talking, and then my sister handed AP's wife an envelope containing the affair evidence. The young lady opened the door wider so my sister could come in, they stayed there for about 30 minutes then my sister came to the passenger side car door to talk to me. My sister told me what they discussed and said AP's wife is not doing well, and she would like me to come in because her daughter was still sleeping. To this day, telling her everything crushed me, I could see she was madly in love with her husband and was hurting. When I came into the apartment, I introduced myself and said I'm sorry to bring you this bad news, AP's wife said I'm sorry too. We sat and talked, I told her everything I knew, and there were parts I did not know and needed her to help fill in the gaps if she could. To my surprise, AP's wife said she met my wife, which floored me. I said from where and she said about three years ago at her husband's commencement ceremony.
I remember my wife attending a commencement ceremony for her job three years ago in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My wife's college held in-person commencement ceremonies all around the country, during the pandemic, the college did virtual commencements. After the pandemic, the college started in-person commencements, I remember my wife and I had a conversation about resuming in-person commencements. Employees don't need to attend a live commencement, my wife never attended one until three years ago. I asked AP's wife do you remember the commencement weekend, and she gave me the date, she said it was special for her and her husband, because it meant he would be graduating and making money, and they could get their own place, coupled with she was proud of her husband accomplishment because he struggled in the program. Previously AP and his wife lived with her parents while her husband was in college. Then I asked how could she cheat with you there? I asked AP's wife to tell me about the commencement weekend, and she filled me in, and also said she spent a lot of time in the hotel room because her daughter was an infant and needed to sleep, her husband was at the commencement the majority of the time. The AP's wife told me the commencement was held in the Civic Center, across from the hotel where they stayed. I asked for the hotel's name, and she gave it to me, my wife never asked me to go to the commencement, and now I know why. AP's wife told me the courses AP struggled with were the ones my wife taught, and they communicated often, this is probably how the relationship blossomed. She said my wife helped a lot and also wrote a program for her husband. I said tell me more about the program my wife wrote. AP's wife said her husband could not get his program to work, one of the requirements for completing the program is actually to write a program. There is a program called the Traveling Salesman, which all major delivery companies use, such as Amazon, Walmart, and UPS. This program maps out the most economical route to deliver packages, students have to use this program to write a delivery route program, and AP had trouble with the program concepts. My wife worked with him for a long time, and AP never got it down, so my wife wrote his program. AP's wife said he asked my wife to attend the commencement ceremony to thank her in person. That's not it. It gets better. My wife was the one who got AP his job at the company she used to work for. My wife did a fantastic job at the company, made them and her a lot of money, they hated to see her go, so when she recommended AP for an entry-level job, he was a shoe in with my wife's recommendation. I think this confirmed how long the affair has been going on, at least the emotional part, I'm not sure when it turned physical. The physical part cannot be denied, I have it on VAR, but I think I just got something that is better than the physical affair. My wife wrote a student's program, and helped him graduate under false pretenses, I'm sure this is a university violation. AP's wife and I exchanged contact information, I told her I was going to divorce my wife, I was collecting more evidence, and asked her if she would hold out on confronting her husband. She then told me something that made me reconsider my revenge. She was pregnant with their second child, and she had told her husband last week. I'm thinking that dirtbag slept with my wife last week, what a low life, this beautiful lady is having his child in 8 months, and he is sleeping with a 50-some year old lady, he does not deserve her. I again said I was so sorry and to call me if she needed anything. AP's wife said she would and she also said she would hold off on confronting her husband, I thanked her and left. When you face the other party's wife, she is such a sweet person, it's hard to want to stomp on my wife's heart as she did mine. Now I have to tread lightly because the other party's wife is with child. I will contact her in a day or two and give her time to process the news. To my surprise, AP's wife contacted me the next day, she said she went through AP's phone, and there were no texts or emails. Then I remember my wife talking about something called Teams, and I asked AP's wife what Teams were, she said Microsoft Teams is a conference program. Well, I discovered how they communicated, one thing I never did was disturb my wife while she worked. She had an office in the basement and kept the door locked when she worked, my wife initially said it was because of the girls, but after the girls moved out, she kept the door locked. My dumbass never had a clue. I told AP's wife about the dinner in another city, and she said her husband told her he was playing cards with the guys from work, he got home around 2 a.m., she thinks, she said she was half asleep when he got home, but she is almost sure it was around 2 a.m. This matches what the pie said, so I'm sure she is correct. Because of AP's wife's condition, I did not want to do a public confrontation. I was going to have AP's wife join me and walk in on them at the restaurant but I decided just to confront my wife at home. 
I wanted to confront AP at his house to get a recorded confession and to see if there were something that I did not know. I asked AP's wife if it was all right, and she said she would love to confront him with me present. I plan to bring my sister just in case we need someone to sit with AP's daughter when we confront my wife's AP. I decided to confront my wife's AP on Wednesday, I chose Wednesday because AP goes home for lunch on Wednesday. He sees my wife on Tuesdays and Thursdays and his lunch at work on Mondays and Fridays. I knew about Tuesdays and Thursdays from the pie, and AP's wife told me about the other days. Now AP's wife knows why she stopped seeing him for lunch three years ago on Tuesdays and Thursdays. AP told her he worked through lunch on Tuesdays and Thursdays but never came home earlier. I asked AP's wife why they moved to the apartment complex they lived in, and she said her husband said it was convenient for work, and I thought for my wife, also. This guy was like a robot with his schedule, if I wanted to take him out, it would be easy. Of course, I would never take him out, my mind has always been my commitment is to my wife, not this guy she is sleeping with. I always thought fighting the guy sleeping with your wife was a crazy concept, not because I'm afraid but because the guy is doing what guys do. If you fight one guy, where does it stop? I came to the resolution I'm married to a mature woman that made her life choice, and now I have to make mine, and I'm not staying in this marriage. The only thing I will fight for is the money I earn. I met my sister after she got off work at my practice at about 7 p.m. and headed to AP's house. My sister drove because I was unsure what emotional state I would be in. Oh, I forgot this part. I decided to confront my wife Thursday when AP typically shows up. I wanted to watch her heart drop. My sister and I knocked on AP's door, and his wife opened the door, AP was in the kitchen loading the dishwasher. I could hear him ask who is it and his wife said it's for you. AP came out with a puzzled look and said, how can I help you? I'm sure he recognized me from the pictures in my house, and I said, I need you to tell me about your affair with my wife. By AP's side was his wife, and she said in a surprisingly calm voice we know about everything, he is here to get your side of the story. I suggest you answer all of his questions. AP's knees buckled, and he almost fell, he leaned on the wall and looked at his wife. I said why don't we sit at the kitchen table, and we can begin. Me, my sister, and AP's wife headed for the kitchen table, AP didn't move. AP's wife motioned her hand for AP to come over to the kitchen table, my sister asked if she needed her to go into the bedroom and sit with her daughter, AP's wife said I just put her down, so she should be sound asleep. We all sat at the kitchen table, and AP was the last to join us. The kitchen table was a four-chair kitchen table, and the way the three of us sat left AP to sit across from me, and look me straight in the face. I asked AP how long have you been sleeping with my wife, he looked at his wife, and she looked him in the eyes and said I think you need to answer his questions. As she pointed to the folder, she said I saw the photos of you walking close to the wall to get into his house. AP started at the beginning, before he started, he looked at his wife and said, I did it for us. I was not going to pass her classes and graduate. He went on to say he had five classes with my wife, and he did well in three of them, they had limited interaction because the college is a 12 CU semester, and if you are doing well, you have limited interaction with your course instructor. The two other classes were challenging, and AP had to have almost daily assistance via Microsoft Teams conferences with my wife. As we talked, it started out professional, and then it got more and more personal. My wife would compliment him on his appearance, and how great of shape he was in. I'm listening to this thinking about the 40 pounds I put on during the pandemic that I never took off. I went from playing tennis two to three times a week to once or twice a month. My wife and I made many meals during the pandemic, she is a skinny lady who may have put on five pounds and quickly lost them. I, on the other hand, always struggled with my weight. They worked more and more together and got closer. The last class, AP could not get his program to work and part of the evaluation process is your program have to work. My wife wrote the program for him and he submitted it as his own work. I was grateful and asked her to meet me at commencement ceremony to thank her, and she agreed. We met at the commencement ceremony. I introduced her to my wife and infant daughter. When my wife went to our room, we had a few drinks, and headed to your wife's room. We talked for a few minutes, got close and kissed, and had sex. I thought it would be a one-time thing, but we stayed in contact. 
I stopped him then and asked how did you keep in contact I did not see any emails. AP then told me they used the college email and Microsoft Teams when his wife ran errands. This explains my wife's need to work on weekends. AP said when I would go out of town or meet up to play tennis, they would have closeness at my house or get a hotel. I told AP I checked the visa bill and did not see any hotel charges, AP said your wife told me she had a bank account that you did not know of, and had a visa card with that bank, he also said my wife had a friend that she used address to have the bank statement sent there. I think I know who that friend is. This did not explain the money, how could my wife pay for this? I did not know, we use our practice to pay all our bills. What AP said gave me the extra 0.1% I needed to divorce my wife, I was 99.9% sure I was going to divorce my wife, now I was 100% sure I was going to divorce my wife. My wife had told me she allocated 55% of her salary to her 403k account, AP said my wife only allocated 45% of her salary to her 403k account, the other 10% was used for her get together with AP and to have a few dinners when I was away on the weekends. Now I wanted to knock all of this guy's teeth out, I'm sure he would kick my ass, but I would get in one good punch. My wife got AP, the job at the company my wife used to work for, and when he was a little short on money my wife would help. AP went on to say he was sorry, and he looked toward his wife and said he would do anything to make this right. AP's wife looked at me and asked if I needed anything else, I said no, wished her good luck, and walked out. It took all I had not to cry a river of tears, I felt like a damn fool. My sister put her arm around me and said it would be alright, I'm here for you, and then I cried like a baby. I did not get into the closeness part with AP out of respect for his wife, and I did not think I could take it. This sucks. My sister drove me to my practice to get my car and asked me what I was going to do. I said I would stick to the plan and confront my wife tomorrow during lunch. My wife did not know I was off for two weeks, all she knew was I was working every day. I told AP before I left never to contact my wife again, not only would she lose me, but I also wanted to make sure she lost her lover. He said he would never contact my wife again, AP had his own problems to deal with I'm sure he would keep his word. When I got in my car, and my sister departed, I realized I had not checked my phone for over four hours. I had about three texts from my wife, and two missed calls. I decided to call my wife, if she saw my face while I was talking, she would know I was lying. I called my wife and told her I was on my way home and had an emergency patient. My wife said dinner was on the table. Should I wait for you? I told her I would have dinner for lunch tomorrow and to go ahead and eat I was not hungry, I had a late lunch. When I got home, my wife had finished dinner and was watching TV, she asked how did the emergency go, I told her, well, without going into too many details. I gave them some pain pills, and I will see them tomorrow. My wife seemed to buy it and went on watching TV, I showered and went to bed. I'm not sure if my wife checked the camera when her AP came over to my house, so I decided to do like AP and walk close to the outside walls when I entered the house on Thursday. I forgot to add this part. I asked AP why he walked close to the house walls when he came over, and he said my wife practiced and knew the blind spots for the cameras. She knew how to get me in and out of the house undetected. I entered our house on Thursday undetected and walked into the bedroom. I arrived about 10 minutes earlier than AP usually would get there. My wife was in the bedroom in a see-through nightie that I had never seen in expensive underwear. She turned around and saw me, she looked like Fred Sanford having the big one, she jumped up and yelled, went into the bathroom, and put on a robe. My wife said what are you doing here, I never come home during lunch because it is a 50 minute drive, and I only take an hour for lunch. I said to my wife you look very good, I said AP name will not be joining you today, today you and I are going to discuss how we will divide our assets. My wife started crying and sat on the bed, she must have cried for what felt like 10 minutes. I told my wife, take your time, I'm sure you are crying over missing your nooner and not me. Then my wife started with how much she loved me, and this was the first time she ever did anything like this, I then told my wife that it was one time too many, and we needed to talk. My wife went through the usual things I can sleep with anybody, she will give me access to her phone, and she will never do it again, what about the girls? 
I told her we would never be together again under no uncertain terms and needed to work out our divorce. My wife asked me to let her get dressed, and I said go ahead, or do you only want AP to see you in your sexy clothes? My wife grabbed some clothes, went into the bathroom, and got dressed. I decided to calm down a little bit and stop taking shots at my wife, my priority was to get a good divorce settlement, and not make my wife look like what she is. I went into the living room and sat on the couch. My wife joined me about five minutes later and sat on the far end of the couch. Like AP, I had already started recording with my cell phone in my pocket, I asked my wife to tell me what happened, and she did. My wife's story matched AP's story with many reasons why she cheated, included in her story, my wife said over time working with him, she developed feelings for him but never loved him, she loves me. I told my wife if this is what love feels like, I don't want any of it, my mind was made up, and she was not going to change it. I outlined what I wanted in the divorce and told her I would not tell her university about her writing the program for AP, along with not telling our daughters you cheated on me with a guy only a few years older than our oldest daughter. We will tell them we grew apart if you agree to my divorce terms. My wife said she would think about it and left to stay with her friend, who covered for her. While my wife was packing a bag, I told her friend's name that she was a piece of shit for protecting her and that I was going to tell her husband. My wife's friend's husband was a friend of mine, a guy that I like, and was also one of my patients. Two days later, my wife called me and said if I increased her buyout of the house to 45%, she would agree to my divorce terms. I said okay, I thought it was a good deal my practice was worth a lot, and the house we purchased many years ago had increased in value. We used a mediator, and after we signed the divorce papers, I asked my wife why she agreed to the deal, and she said I have known you close to 30 years and when you have your mind made up no one can change it. My wife's friend was another driving force that convinced her to take the deal, she did not want to risk losing her marriage, and her friend told her to tell me she was sorry. My wife moved out of the house and rented an apartment, we spoke to our daughters together and told them we had grown apart. I did feel bad about lying to my daughters, but I thought it would be better than a messy divorce. They assured me their love for me would not change, and they are still my daughter. This made me feel a million times better, I lost the love of my life I did not want to lose the other loves of my life. I've been divorced for three years, I have a girlfriend and still live in the same house, and my practice is still doing well. My ex-wife remarried and went back into the private sector, and she and her new husband purchased a home together. We see each other at family functions, and I always say hi and treat her with respect. I refuse to be a victim twice by carrying hate around. What is done is done. After my divorce was final, I messaged AP's wife on Facebook, I thanked her for her help. She messaged me twice once to tell me she would give her husband a second chance and the second time to tell me she had a little boy and her marriage is a lot better now, her husband is a different man. I'm happy for her, I hope everything works out, for me, the events that ended my marriage are a distant memory, and every day it goes farther away. Update Thank you all for your kind words, there were a few questions, and I want to address them all in this update. I attempted to shorten the story it was turning into a novel, my wife did not go easily after the divorce. She tried to get back with me for a year with presents, closeness, and gifts. Every time she saw me, she would give me a speech on how she had changed, she also tried to use my daughters to convince me to remarry her. We lived on the same street for so long that everybody knew we were not together, I do not know if my wife was genuinely sorry or if she missed our lifestyle. My wife found religion, she proudly let me know, and not only did she find faith, she also discovered her new husband at church. My oldest daughter was always level-headed, when my daughters were young, if the oldest daughter got into trouble, she would take her punishment, whereas my youngest daughter would cry and say I'm a lousy father. My oldest daughter told my ex-wife dad has made up his mind and that you needed to accept his decision, my youngest daughter would give me speeches on forgiveness and we need to be a family again. One of the sad outcomes of the divorce is I'm not as close to my youngest daughter as I used to be. I love both of them equally and I will be here if they need me, hopefully, over time, my youngest daughter will grow to accept my decision. I told my youngest daughter and oldest daughter together shortly after the divorce and I would tell anybody who asks for my advice, without trust, you do not have a relationship. Earl's Thoughts 
This story reminds me of the movie The War of the Roses starring Michael Douglas, Kathleen Turner and Danny DeVito without the violence. When Op decided, he was going to divorce his wife he turned the process into a business deal. How do you think Op did? Is there anything you think Op should have done differently? Comment below and I will see you at the following story.